Hi people, this video was recorded at the same time as part 1, so although I read many of your suggestions on the last video, such as lowering the percentage killed, using efficiency instead of distance, and turning off my Steam notifications, I didn't get to implement them just yet. However, I think I managed to edit out the notifications this time. Okay, so here's the new seed, it's seed 301. That's like what YouTube always freezes its view count at, right? And to be honest, so I saw the first few hundred generations of this and I really liked what I was seeing, but I haven't actually seen the long-term end result of this simulation. So I'm as much in the dark as you are. So let's just do a step-by-step -step generation, I guess. Remember, these creatures are going to be completely different from the other set of 1000 because it's a completely different seed. All the random numbers that this Java thing produces will be completely different. So here's this constant, 0.93 feeding its input into two nodes. Look at that, pretty cool. Well, lots of accents here. That's kind of crazy, but it is moving backwards, minus 0 0.095 meters. This one has Pwatnas, two PX nodes, and two multiplication nodes. The PX nodes are being fed into muscles and, yeah, I don't know. They will get easier to understand as the generations go on, as you kind of saw in the last seed, but this one's even better. <gasps> all these nodes are constants! I've never seen a creature where all the nodes are the same type before. Oh, twitching there. This one's pretty good. This one's a little better. This one's not so good. This one's the best. This one's the worst. This one's medium. This one is terrible. Now I can't even zoom in fast enough. Ah, oh, that's not enough time. What am I talking about? Oh, my commentary is so bad. Here we go. Yeah, let's sort them. I wonder what the best creature will look like this time. I don't think it was quite as nice looking as last seed's best first creature, because otherwise I would have just shown you this one. But it must be pretty good to beat out 999 other competitors, right? Also, if you are a TWOW person that was secretly adding something, every emphasized syllable I said, spell them all out and you get who's eliminated. Okay, you know what? I gotta stop. Okay, here's the best creature. Oh, right. It was a twitchy one, which is why I didn't want to show you. But remember, not a bug. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Best creature only moved 0 0.36 meters. That's pretty bad. Worst creature went the exact same dis- No, it's not quite. Pretty much the same distance though in the other direction. It's also a flopper, right? Look at that. See, using the time node as an accent to tell how long the muscles to be is a very good mechanism to get a flop in. And it's also very easy to set up because, like, the randomness, all you need is two things. You know, randomly assign one node to record the time, which is like a 1 in 11 chance. But also because you have like three or four nodes, it's a 1 in 3 chance. So a 1 in 3 chance. And then have one of the muscles choose that time node as its input, which is like a 1 in 4 chance, so like 1 in 12. So one in, one in, about 1 in 12 of these creatures has the mechanisms to do a flop. The only other restriction is that you have to have the right structure of body, right? Wow, let's find the creature right in the middle that, that got exactly zero. Oh, there's, there's a bunch. Oh, look at that. There's a time node, and then both the inputs for the division node are that time node, so it's dividing one number by itself, and as expected, you get one. Yeah, look at that, look at that, it's a square that stays up. Just kidding. Kill 500, reproduce. Back. Okay, so, there's something really cool about this seed, and if you didn't look at the spoiler that you saw in the comments of my code when I put the code up, then it will be exciting for you as well. So there was a breakthrough, so I'd better talk about it. But just realize, look at the scale of this image. Remember, there was no creature that moved 7 meters backward this time, so the scale's only from 0 0.3 meters backwards to 0 0.5 meters forward. So it's very tiny, we're really zoomed in right here. Also, let's look at that best creature. So we got, we got 0 0.366 here, and then we got 0 0.550 here by a square. Hey, there's a modulus thing. The modulus is taking the time as it... Hey, that's the thing I was thinking about. Take the time node, put it through a modulus, and now you've got something that cycles every second. And do you, uh, that's pretty cool, right? Like, that's the type of thing that you would want to have for moving legs or, like, moving whatever. You want it to repeat every second or, like, every however long you want it, your cycle to be. And it's modulus 1, by the way, because it's taking its input from 1. And that 1 node is coming from a division node that's dividing time by itself again. Ooh, look at this creature. So big. It's extending outside of the window. Rebellious. This one? Well, in the preview, it looks like you're taking a triangle and then you're shifting it to the upper right, and those accents are showing the movement, right? It's like demonstrating how translate works. Okay, enough talking, let's keep going. What is this special trait that Carrie keeps talking about that makes this seed so exciting? We'll have to find out. Oh, I also noticed that since these single percentile lines on the screen are so thin, sometimes if they're perfectly horizontal, they'll, they won't show up at all. 
By the way, oh, someone went pretty far backward. To people who haven't watched the original evolution videos, what these lines mean is when you sort all the creatures from best to worst, you can easily find the percentiles, right? The 90th percentile means the point at which 90% of creatures are worse than that. This graph shows every 10th percentile line as a thick line. So here's zero percentile. Everyone's better than this. 10, 10 percentile. 20th percentile, 30th, all the way up to 100th percentile, and the red line is the 50th percentile, that's the median. And then the thin lines are single percentiles in the most extreme 10%. So I was just going to show what the worst creature did. Not a big deal. Yeah, so species S57 is really disappointed in you. You put shame on the whole species, that takes a lot. To humiliate an entire species? Humiliating a country is one thing, if, if you've done that, I feel bad, but that's not quite as bad as humiliating all of humankind, which is equivalent to what this creature right here is doing to species S57, which is also not doing so well in the graph, but also not doing terribly. Okay, so there has been there has not been an improvement for a while, so let's just keep going until we see one. And, oh, there's a big one. Actually, it's still less than a meter. I was like, oh, that's so big, but I forgot how zoomed in it was. S56 seems to be trendy. Yes, S56 is trendy. Look at that. Majestic. No twitching. Okay, is this majestic, though? But you you do have to agree that it at least looks better in that the notes look like they're going in, like, smooth arcs, and it looks almost intentional. Well, you know what? They improve themselves. You'll see. With something that I think is really just mind-blowing. What they do is pretty crazy. And I actually saw it in one of the comments. The comments was like, these creatures need to develop blank. And I was like, oh my gosh, that does happen. Just you wait and see. And hey, look at that. Look at that. Whoa, big breakthrough. Not really, because it's still less than two meters. The big breakthrough was going from less than a meter here for, from an S56 species to an S68 species getting twice as far. Now, because of that, I am really expecting S56 to really increase in the stacked area chart in the next few generations. Okay, this is kind of funny because it's going back and forth, but it still manages to get first place, which means that if it can refine itself, it can easily triple that performance, right? There's drama, okay? You don't know what these creatures are saying to themselves, but they're really, like, insulting each other because they all think they're so much better. Okay, so like I said- ooh, another breakthrough. I'm expecting S68 to take over because it had the best creature here. Unless this is not an S68 species. So now the best species is S56 again, so S68 might not be able to take over. But I do have to say, six nose might be just a little too much. If we really want to think what is causing, what is the motor behind all these muscle movements, last time there was an older creature in this um, simulation that used time as its motor, right? Putting it through modulus and all that. But here there is no time node. There are only nodes that record the Y coordinate, so that is the metric that controls this creature. Which means that if this creature just decides to say stay put for just one frame, it will stop moving because the Y coordinates will no longer change and it'll no longer move. So it's like a shark, because sharks need to keep swimming to get water through their gills so they can still have oxygen. See there, it stopped moving. Again, these breakthroughs, I keep going like, whoa, whoa, but they're tiny. We just went from 0 0.8 to 1.6 to 2.4. Hey, they're all multiples of 0 0.8, pretty cool. But, just a spoiler, these creatures get three times as far as the previous seed did. So if you know your multiplication, and you know the numbers 7.4 and 3, then you know something big is going to happen, right? Okay, so S45, despite not having the best creature, S45 has clearly taken over a lot of the population, with really rigid muscles here. Also, like, this is a very reliable way of just getting in, like, a meter of distance, but not anything further. This is like when you want to play it safe and don't want to go out with a bang, don't want to take a risk, this is what you do, okay? Pay attention. So, big breakthrough from 2 to 5, 6. And you can see it's the same pattern of movement, but it's just like not going backwards anymore, which is really helpful. And maybe you're starting to see what I think is really cool that's about to form. But I won't tell you just yet in case you're still trying to figure it out. Now, one thing I did kind of notice is that calculations through these axons and like inputs and outputs on nodes it's completely unrelated to where the node is actually placed in the structure of the creature there's two different systems happening in the creature at once the muscular system and the neural system and there's no reason why they should be intertwined like i have them here i just thought it's easier for humans to see when they are intertwined 
right? But I could have the brain completely separate off on a different screen acting on its own. Also look at this, it's like exponential growth of the percentile lines as well as the species breakdown. And see S68, I told you it would take over and now it has. And S56 seems to be its partner in crime, though there is no crime because these are all lawful citizens, I just know it. Oh my god. Okay, so you know in the last video I said, oh, nothing happened to the median line until about generation 10 when things started to really pick up, but I don't know why. And that's pretty cool because it shows the whole steps of evolution. But then in this simulation, it took a full, like, 88 generations before the median started to pick up. And last time I said, oh, I don't know why this increase is happening, but this time I do, kind of. I think it's because... You know, this guy can't control which direction it's going in, so that's why it goes back and forth. Being able to stabilize the direction you're going in is what this creature had as a benefit. And I think the reason why it was able to do that is because the node in the back is high friction, again, so that, that helps it stay on the ground longer. And maybe just other muscle movements made it so that that back muscle always stays in the back so that it can always head in the right direction, which is forward. So that's the big breakthrough that happened in Generation 66, but it really didn't spread through the population until like the mid 80s right and now we're now we're really picking up it's like a bottleneck right you know bottlenecks always cause the dynamic of like all the gene pools to change because now a new creature is in power and all that but this is not a bottleneck because i always have a thousand creatures alive so i don't know what to call it also look at that diversity of species there's like eight nine species that show up i only show species when they have at least 25 creatures because otherwise there's just too many tags showing up also, like, the biggest, the biggest chunk of creatures is only 218, like, that never happens. Um, so now the best creature is an S58 species, which means, um, I expect the S58 species to grow in the future, right? And now it's pretty clear what I thought was really cool, right? So you see the node in the back, and then there's five, four nodes in the front that rotate, kind of like a wheel. Right now that, that wheel is really sloppy, but you can definitely see a clockwise rotation. See, this is like a malformed wheel, you can see that... It starts out the same way as this guy, but it just doesn't have all the tendons to hold the wheel together, so it just kind of falls apart, which is sad. And then the worst creature is just another disgrace. So like I said, I don't know the long-term result of this. I think I went to about like generation 200 or 300, but I don't know what happens after that. And hey, look at that, S58 is now the majority. Pretty cool, right? So as we're a-lapping now, I thought I would just talk about one thing about how the creature moves. So I've talked about this creature structure with one big node in the back holding the creature together and then the wheel of four nodes rotating in the front, right? But I haven't talked about what calculations that creature is doing to get the rotation to happen. Okay, first of all, I didn't zoom in enough to be able to read anything, right? There's just so, so many pieces that I can't make sense of it. My idea in my head, I guess my intuition is you can use PX and P... Well, I guess you can't use PX, but you can use PY again in the wheel to kind of record sign of the wheel's rotation, right? Because as it goes up to the top, um, it will return a bigger number, and as it goes back down to the bottom, it will return a lower number, just like sign. And you can use that to extend the muscles, and it's pretty easy to convert from sine to cosine by just like adding numbers... I think. Okay, I have no idea what I'm talking about. These creatures know more about movement than I do. And also, I have not been talking about the latest news of Evolution Island, but you can see FS57 is now in the lead. So all that happened is we lost a muscle. So here we go with eight muscles and five nodes, and you can see it's doing pretty well. But perhaps you feel like your body just feels very clunky and like tumorous, I don't know, like you've got extra muscles all over the place and you just need to get rid of that, right? It's just like extra weight holding you back and, and you don't want that. So you get rid of that muscle and you become an S57 species and now you're just so much lighter on your feet and you feel like the world is your oyster. Wait, that wheel is turning so fast. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess that's what evolution does, right? I mean, what was I thinking? Of course the wheel is going to turn faster and faster. Also, I don't really know why all of the nodes are not dark red or black, because with a wheel, you want it to be high friction everywhere. I mean, a tire is really high friction, it's rubber, because you need to grip the ground. So maybe they'll fix that in the future, or maybe they just know something I don't. I did say that they could get up to 20 or so meters, so they still have like 9 more meters to go. 
at least, remember, because I haven't gone into the long term of this simulation. It would be cool if these creatures could beat the original creatures from the original evolution simulator video without accents. And that was about 21 meters, or was it 26? Anyway, if they could beat that, that would be pretty cool, because that means the more power you hand over to the creatures, the better they can work with it. You'd think so, because they have more options. But again, it also means that they have more stuff to figure out on their own, and there's more ways they can get it wrong. So I wouldn't be surprised if they don't get to 26 meters this time. I mean, that is pretty far. Considering the last seed only got to 7 meters. Oh, by the way, that might make it seem like evolution doesn't work. The fact that some seeds don't turn out as well as others. But I think it has a lot to do with just getting stuck in a rut. Because real evolution on Earth there were long periods of very little change, right? And you would often need a big extinction to really see new species arise. And that's because there's just nothing sparking, sparking change. And, and people are fine, not people, creatures are fine as they are. There's no reason to improve. So maybe one way I can better these guys' evolutions is to kill off a bunch of them haphazardly or add a new obstacle. I mean, I'm, I am gonna make new videos where they do have to deal with obstacles because now that they have accents, they should be able to think smarter and have different modes of action, right? There's sensors, which is really cool. So maybe if they sense a bump coming up ahead, they'll extend their leg muscle. There are no legs, but you know, they can just do different things corresponding to different stimuli, which is really cool and something that the original evolution simulator creatures can't do. That's another reason why I think moving from away from internal clocks and two accents was a good idea. There's just so much more room for exploration of different mechanisms, which is a word I say a lot, and I said that again too. <gasps> oh well, all humans are broken record players. I'm just one of them. Also look, new species, S59. Okay, so I was lying. So you thought that you are really fat and overweight over here because you had too many muscles. And, and I said, like, you need to get rid of one of those muscles to do better. Oh wait, that's a bad one. You need to get rid of those muscles to do better. So cut off one of them and now you're S57 and now you turn so much better. But I was wrong because having more muscles actually means you're stronger and faster. So bring, don't just bring back that one muscle, bring back two muscles. So you're now an S59 species, right? Nine muscles, you're like a cat, nine lives. So now you can run even faster. Like, look at that. Don't you want to be like that? At this point, the wheel is looking very well held together. It's like, if you remember back in the wheel back here, was this a wheel at this point? Kind of, uh, not really. But you can see, it feels like one of those nodes of the wheels is just gonna fly off at any moment because they're just not strung together very well. It's just chaos and, and, and dangerous. But then as you move on, the wheel gets tighter and tighter so that it doesn't fall apart. So in here it's still still kind of like shaking all over the place, but you feel like the nodes are, are staying a close distance to each other, which is important. And then once you get here, now it looks like almost like just a solid piece of nodes just sticking together and rotating as one piece, which is good. And there's actually only one muscle being extended and released. Do you see that? No other... Well, the muscles inside the wheel are probably doing something that I don't even understand. I do think the fact that there are two muscles connecting the wheel to the support in the back means that you should have two muscles extending and contracting together, but I don't know. Maybe that's better, maybe it's not, maybe they just haven't figured it out yet, or maybe it's just too much to have two muscles acting in synchrony. So looking at the line graph now, you can see that maybe this jump, there's a jump, but maybe it corresponds to this S59 uprising, and maybe it doesn't, because it looks like it's happening a bit later, but there's definitely been an increase lately. Well, there hasn't been for over a hundred generations before that. So I feel like five nodes is the way to go, right? I mean, the three major species now are all five noded. It's really the number of muscles that divides people. One thing I noticed about the line graph just now is that right here, the 80th percentile, 20th percentile line actually drops. Actually, that happened in a, a few other simulations too, but it drops here right as S59 took to power. So maybe S59 was a more volatile species. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but every creature, in addition to all its other traits and information, it also stores a mutability variable, which tells it how much it can mutate its children. So certain creatures can be really, really stable and produce children almost exactly like itself, and other creatures can have children that have a higher chance of having big mutations from its parent. 
And I thought I would do that because sometimes it's good to have lots of mutations, especially at the beginning when you really want to try out everything. And when it's near the end and the creatures are settling on what the best mode of transportation is, they just want to tweak. And you need to have very fine tuning mutations in order for you to tweak. And I figured since they can mutate that variable anyway, they they can get it to whatever is ideal for them at that moment. I mean, give more power to the creatures and less to me. That's what I always say, right? Vote me president now. Especially, creatures should be given the right to vote because there have been 318,000 of them. And if- actually, that's not even enough to get me to win. Not even close. You know, I need to simulate a lot more in order to, to win this presidential election. Also, I'm too young. So, it looks like the best creature is just about at 20 meters now. Let's check. It's at 19.952, which is pretty nice. Also, I think it's pretty clear now, some of the nodes in that wheel are definitely not high friction. So much so that they're actually white, which makes me think that being white is what they want. They want to be super low friction, so somehow that helps. I, I'm no longer going to say it's just a mistake, because the fact that they went from being this random assortment of colors to pure black and white, and that one red node, I don't know, um, means that it's beneficial to them to have those different colors. Also, I'm rooting for them to get to 20. The first one that gets to 20 gets my appreciation. So while we're waiting for the best creature to hit 20 meters, I thought we would just go over some fun geometry facts, right? It's always nice to learn new things, and this is an educational channel after all. That's why I upload marble races, because marble races are so educational. Anyway, I was gonna say, let's learn some geography. This pink shape looks like Iran, doesn't it? That's crazy. And then the light green part looks like Oklahoma, which means that if there are any Oklahomans out there, you have to comment on this video to show that this, mess, this sign of love from me did not go unnoticed. Oh, I think they hit 20 meters now. I can see it definitely jumped. Yeah, there it is. 20.130 meters. And I bet it's just some tweaks again. Some minor adjustments. Oh, wait, look at that. The wheel is like in the air for like three seconds. You know, it's doing an anti-wheelie. The wheelie's off the ground. Oh no, that is still a wheelie. And it's like, why? Why are you doing a wheelie? The wheel is the whole reason why you can move forward. But whatever works, right? So now I'm out to generation 1206 and not much has changed. So you can see in the last 800 generations, very little happens. So now we can look at the, what, what the very best creature does. And that wheel is spinning as fast as it possibly can because if it could spin any faster then the creature would already have tried it so you know this must be the maximum and one thing i noticed is that the posts that you see they only get drawn up to 19 meters and i know why that is and i should fix that but even though you can't actually see them crossing 22 you still believe me when i tell you that this creature ran 22.346 meters right oh oh whoa something bad is happening clearly since fitness isn't measured past 15 seconds, the longevity of this creature is not taken into consideration. So this creature could explode at like 50 seconds, but evolution wouldn't care. I wonder if I could figure out how this works. I wish I could, but I don't know. I'm not going to try. One of you viewers could try, and that would be really nice. So let's go through all the eras of this evolution simulation. Generation 1 was in the era of the possessed triangle. Um, having a seizure and all that. It was a very primordial time, no one really knew what they were doing. And then, Generation 20 was the era of the modulus time, clock time, I guess, because it's time being put through a clock, and I was very excited because I thought this type of mechanism would take over and creature would use it and perfect it, but they didn't. I mean, it seems the most intuitive to me to use, so that's why I was such a fan, but it didn't really work that well. Then by generation 50, 63, oh, there's this creature, which, oh right, generation 63, we're in the era of the single leap creatures, like this guy, is a pretty elegant leap, right? But it's just not enough to compete with the already forming wheeled creatures. I don't know what their official name is, a wheelbarrow? Okay, this one is not, not a wheel, but like, you know what I mean, right? And then they just perfect it and perfect it, so here's the S58 re rain and the wheel is still not fully developed, but it's getting there. Developing wheels takes a long time, because they're already at generation 134, which is pretty far. Um, and then we move on to the next era, which is S57. These are the streamlined wheels. They only have seven muscles between their five nodes, which is the lowest you could probably go. And then we reach this super long era, which is probably going to go on forever, of S59 being 
Um, a really nice wheeled creature. It looks like a flower kind of on its side. I'm trying to think, well, what does this look like? Comment what you think this creature should be called in the comments below. Yay. Um, also, yeah, so I was not lying when I said that these creatures got three times as far as the last seed's creatures. See, they got to 21, which is three times seven. But they did not get any further than that. One thing I think is really cool is as you drag the slider bar around, you can see the gradual modifications that the median creature makes. One of them is the white node that's in the upper right is pink a lot in the early generations and then it becomes white. It, it, it's not really gradual, but you can see the pinkness generally, like, gradually fades away. And then another thing is the number of that node it starts out being in the 90s. See, 92, that's 83, never mind. Okay, so 92, 92, 91, 90, and then it slowly lowers itself in 92 again, 88, 87. Can't really see it now. 88, 77, 82, 87, 81, and then by the end it's 78, 79, 77, 78, 78, so now like, now it knows what the best number is for ideal movement. And when, well, there was another seed, I, f I must have lost it or something, where it was very clear, you could see the number like dropping from like 0 0.4 down to 0 0.2, down to 0 0.1, and you knew that it was like slowly finding the right number to use. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, but that's it for this simulator. 21 is a pretty good performance, not quite as high as the original, but every creature has their advantages and disadvantages, and these guys may not be the fastest, but they are the coolest looking, you have to agree. And next time we'll see how these creatures deal with, like, staircases maybe? Or maybe even food? Oh, one thing that a lot of you are asking for is efficiency, right? Like, no one likes spazzy creatures and no one likes creatures that put way more work than they need to in order to move forward, so maybe as a measure of fitness it should be distance over how much energy their muscles in total exerted, and then we'll get creatures that are actually elegant in their movement because they're not wasting any, any, any energy. Whoa, that creature just died. See, that's what happens when you use the Y coordinate as your motor, you know, if it, yeah, I already explained that. But yeah, I will do efficiency soon. All these ideas, they will get their own videos, but one at a time, okay? It's all coming. You gotta be patient, just like these creatures because they, they were patient for thousands of generations. Anyway, that's it. Goodbye.